Well, that is the big news this morning. Those 191 votes that separate Chris Kobach from Governor Jeff Collier, of course, with Chris Kobach leading at this point. But we want to make sure everyone knows that this is not the end of this race at this point. Parts of the Millbrook community just south of Hill City in Graham County are almost unrecognizable following Monday night's storm. Take a look at how this road has completely opened up going into this mobile home community and all of this debris that's been pushed onto parts of the property. And the first scenario forces participants to stay exactly where they are and find a place to hide from the active shooter. So that could mean hiding under a desk or behind a table. Well, the postmaster here in Wichita tells me that they prepare for all of this year round. They're preparing for the rush. They're preparing for the increase in customers. And of course, all of these packages that they're shipping on top of normal mail that they have to deliver as well. We've been showing you a few examples that do meet these accountability standards for the Better Business Bureau. But here's an example where that's not necessarily true. For the Anti-Defamation League, it shows that it's not accredited according to the Better Business Bureau. And then when you scroll down, you'll find that there are five standards for charity accountability that are not met. Yeah, I actually just talked with the homeowner here at this home in Tescott. Their home is okay for the most part, he says, but this is the damage that they're now having to deal with this morning. You can see that this siding here on this shed came down during that storm yesterday. And if you look up towards the top, you can see the roof, all of that siding there and those wooden beams that are falling in. These huge slabs are basically just covering this parking lot. You can see them scattered all over the grass and this parking lot as well. Tons of leaves and tree branches that are down. There is a lot going on and it smells really good in here. That's because we're surrounded by a whole lot of pizza and I'm joined right now by Chef Andrew with USC 259. Thanks for being with us. Some of those questions include Will metal detectors work inside these doors in order to keep those kids safe? Why is a police force necessary for a school district? And what are some specific things they're doing to protect kids? There's debris, these trees that looks like it was just kind of swept over to this area. What do you mean when you say this is the busiest day of the year? Well, today we're going to probably deliver over 40,000 packages just here in Wichita alone. You can see about four hours after the shooting, still quite a few officers here on scene working to investigate what exactly happened this morning around 3 o'clock. Yeah, it's pretty hard to miss these big yellow buses and these flashing stop signs when drivers are out on the roads. There's actually some drivers out right now who are doing their dry runs to make sure they're familiar with the route that they need to take in the upcoming days as they get ready for the school year. But we did follow one first student bus driver along his route for summer school. He says he sees a lot of drivers who are not paying attention and they're putting kids in danger. Troy Barnes never planned on becoming a bus driver. His love for the job actually took him by surprise. I was having a good time with the kids. The kids were understanding me, listening to me. I wasn't having, having very many problems with it, and I, I just started liking it, you know. And now I just would, don't want to give it up. <laughs> now he's found his main job is keeping his kids safe, more so than just getting them to and from school. Barnes works hard to protect them, flashing his yellow lights, pulling out his stop arm. But he says cars still go right past him. They're in a hurry for no reason at all. Your kids are walking out. All of a sudden, the car comes from behind. Zoom. It's like, what's going on here? The beginning of the school year is when he sees the most people doing this, especially on busy four-lane streets. USD 259 bus drivers kept track of stop arm violations during one day last school year. On April 18th, drivers reported a total of 361 violations. About 25% of the almost 450 USD 259 drivers said they experienced at least one violation that day. In 2017, drivers logged stop arm violations during a six-week period. About two-thirds of the bus drivers reported at least one violation during that time. Some drivers reported 30 or more each week. Barnes says he knows one of the big reasons this is happening. A lot of people are on their phones. A lot of people are talking on their phones, you know, and, and they're just not paying attention. His kids know it's not safe to cross the road until Barnes gives them the thumbs up. He asks drivers to simply put their phones down and pay attention. When you see a bus with the, with the 
yellow amber lights on, that means we're going to put our signs out. So stop. Stop ahead of time. Keep our kids safe. Keep your children safe, you know? It's as simple as that. Now, we followed Barnes again during a summer school route, so he only had two stops, and both of them were in residential areas. Luckily, no one went through those stop signs, but he says he's more concerned about the first few weeks of school starting today, and he's hoping that drivers will pay attention and will stop for these stop signs, especially when they see those lights flashing on those busy four-lane roads. Melissa Murray has been following the situation, and uh, Melissa, how are things looking right now there? Well, the waters have receded in most of the areas that I've been checking out today, but we just found this area literally probably a quarter of a mile, if that, down the road from where we were earlier, where things were looking good. This is the corner of Taylor and Logan, and this is as far as my photographer will let me go. But as you can see, the water is almost up to the top of my boots here, where this disc golf park is for Pratt. So. I talked to the guy who owns the workshop just up the street from here earlier today, and he was walking me through the inside of it to show me some of that damage. Ryan Rose started his Labor Day with none other than labor. Randy called me, and he said his shop was flooded, so we went and checked our shop, and we had the same situation. He spent hours at his cousin Randy's workshop off of West River Road and Highway 54 in Pratt, clearing out what he could after rain fell overnight. You could just tell that the water had been 20 inches deep inside the building. Um, things had floated and moved around. Diesel heater was flipped over and the fuel leaked out. Yes. Back at his own workshop. 21 inches deep inside the building. Trucks, appliances, clothing, and everything in between, either floating in water or now under it. A lot of money sitting in here it was underwater. Hopefully most of it will dry out and be all right. The water receded throughout the morning. Oh, I'd say it's gone down 18 inches. Anyhow, close. Oh, no. The lid wasn't on it anymore, honey. But the cleanup is going to take a while. Uh, what I'm mostly worried about is the fact that it's supposed to rain again in a few hours. And that's what everyone here has been asking me about. Is it going to rain even more? So emergency management officials are telling people to brace themselves for more possible rain and reminding them that if they find themselves in danger to call 911 for help. Now, I did talk with the emergency management officials earlier today who tell me no one has been hurt since this rain started yesterday morning and they're hoping that it continues to be that way and everyone continues to be safe. For some people, giving is more fun than receiving during the holidays. Derby police are giving back with the help of some community partners so that elementary students can provide gifts to their families this holiday season. Melissa Murray takes us to the Shop with a Cop event. Go check out? Yeah. All right, let's do it. We're going this way. Okay, hey, we're going up. It's something many of us are doing right now, shopping for the holidays. But giving isn't something everyone is able to do easily. Uh, this is my sister's. Eight-year-old Christopher is an elementary student in Derby. The school district selected him and eight other kids as ones who might need a little extra help this holiday season. That's wonderful. Thank you. On Saturday, they headed to Target with Derby police officers to buy gifts for the children's families. Worked a... Worked all night last night and still wanted to come out here and shop with these kids. It's part of the fourth annual Shop with a Cop event. These two are for Oliver. This is for me. This is for, um, uh, Riley. Riley. For Lieutenant Jimmy Queen, it's hard to put into words what it's like to see the kids and officers shopping together each year. When you get to see the kids being happy, being, you know, being able to help their families, which is what we do. Um, I, I can't describe it. The officers headed back to the station after shopping to wrap the gifts, eat some pizza, and give a little something extra to the kids. What was the hardest one to pick out? It was, um, it was, um, mine and something else. That gift Christopher picked out for himself? It's caught beautiful. In Derby, Melissa Murray, Eyewitness News.